So this is a perfect example. Let's keep going with this example here, Brett. So uh, someone exits their business. They have a $2.5 million windfall. Um, most people think, oh, cool, that's a ton of money. And, you know, but by the time all the tax man comes and kind of eats away at all these different fees, and you got broker fees and lawyer fees, it's, you're not walking away with two and a half million bucks, especially with your tax burden, you said, with $600,000. So he's able to put, you know, say the 2.6 million minus some of the fees with brokering the transaction and stuff into like a separate account. And then what, what does that look like? He has certain restrictions. Can he invest in, it sounds like stocks, real estate, other businesses. How does that work in terms of like the next steps for him? Yeah, that's a great question. So the IRS gives these tax incentives, they're called legal la tax loopholes to incentivize the money to keep working, right? And so what they don't want to do is, you know, for example, you and I sell a business and just take our money and just sit it in the bank, right? Or just take it and just spend it on boats and cars and our houses because that doesn't necessarily incentivize the economy. I mean, that's kind of cool for our, us, right? So what they say is, hey, we'll, we'll allow these legal loopholes as long as you put it into investments, right? Investment purpose, such as stock market, right? Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, such as a real estate investment, real estate, such as a new business venture. Why? Because that spurs economic growth, which in turn creates more jobs, which in turn actually creates more tax revenue. So it's completely legal way to do this. After thousands of closes now, uh, 1920s tax law originally, it's known as a seller carry back. Um, we just have perfected it for this niche for the deferred sales trust. So it's really flexible. And what's nice about it is you can either receive income or not receive income. Um, you can invest it again in real estate or not in real estate. Um, and you can use it as kind of your funding source for your next business venture. So it, it just all depends on what your wealth plan is and what your vision is. And oftentimes it depends on what stage of life you're in. So some of our clients, they're baby boomers, right? And they're part of the largest wealth transfer in the history of the planet. And this is according to the American Bankers Association. There's about 17 to 20 trillion dollars that's going to pass in the next 20 years. And in fact, there's about 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 every day and about seven in the U.S. alone. And they're, they're, they're really struggling with toilets, trash, liability, employees. These businesses, they poured blood, sweat, and tears in for the last 20, 30, 40 years, but they don't know how to get out without getting, again, hammered by that 30 to 50% in capital gains tax. So we got to just kind of clarify your vision, look what you're trying to do, and then just do a mathematical equation. And at the end of the day, as long as your deal is at least a million or more net equity, and at least probably four to $500,000 of gain, uh, then you're looking at the deferred sales trust as I think is a real, real solid viable option. You have just listened to another information-packed episode of Capital Gains Tax Solutions with Brett Swartz. We hope you enjoyed today's show and found it helpful. Visit CapitalGainsTaxSolutions.com to access the show notes and to access more resources. Don't forget to leave a review and join us again next time.